You have an environment built on Microsoft Azure and it needs to be FedRAMP compliant. What controls do you need to put in place in order to accomplish that? Hi, my name is Scott Chapman. I'm the CISO for Project Hosts and today I want to talk with you about the IA family of FedRAMP controls. There are 27 controls in the IA family and if you're built on top of Azure you get to fully inherit one of those controls so you just need to put in place the other 26 controls. What they have to do with is identifying and authenticating users and devices, the IA family. So a big piece of this is around users, ensuring that all users have uh, a unique account name. We do this in Active Directory, and we use Active Directory for authentication not only for Windows environments, but also for Linux environments. This centralized way of doing things ensures that we have unique account names and for, for every user and that they work across both environments. Then in addition you need to have FedRAMP compliant passwords. Those passwords have a number of different attributes and many of them can be set inside of Active Directory themselves. For example, password length, reuse, maximum minimum lifetime, a number of those things are just settings in Active Directory. But some of the requirements are not. Some of the requirements are, for example, complexity. FedRAMP requires that every password must have lowercase, uppercase letter, number, and a symbol. It must have all four character types for a valid password. In Active Directory, you can make a complexity setting that only requires three of those, but you can't make one that requires all four. So we do that through separate things that tools that we have created for our environments. For example, we've created an admin center for all of our internal project host users to use. They use it for a number of different things, but one of the things that it does is ensure that when users change their passwords, they have the right complexity requirements. And for our customers, we have created a user admin portal. That's what you're seeing now. And that allows our customers to be able to create passwords that will definitely meet the correct password complexity requirements. In addition to username and password, FedRAMP also requires multi-factor authentication. We do that using smart cards. They're FIPS compliant smart cards and we pass them out in such a way that they meet with FedRAMP high requirements. In other words, we uh, pass them out in person to people. We, uh, for our customers, we allow them to use their own PIV or CAC cards to connect into our environment, just authenticating into our Active Directory and, putting, and, and having those PIV or CAC cards be the second factor. Or we allow them to do a single sign-on into our environment, where they do all their authentication locally to their environment, and then it's single sign-on into our environment. So both of those ways allow multi-factor authentication one is at our level, one is at their level. In addition to those, there's some other controls that are part of the IA family. For example, there have to be technical controls in place to ensure that passwords are changed every 60 days. And inactive accounts have to be disabled after 90 days. We have some scripts in place in order to ensure that that happens. Also, if there are contractors or foreign nationals that have accounts in the environment, that has to be designated in the account for that user. And finally, all of the devices, servers and other devices that are connected to the environment must be identified with unique account names and authenticated as well. And so that's all handled for us by Active Directory. All those together make up the IA family of controls and this concludes this video on that control set. If you have any questions about the IA controls or FedRAMP in general, please contact us and please have a look at the other videos of FedRAMP controls in this series and let us know your feedback. Thank you.